for us and we hope for you. And we're recording it, which is great as well. Um, thank you, Mazel Tov on three years. I don't know which anniversary that is, if it's wood or cotton or whatever, but we'll do something about that soon, maybe. Um, <laughs> but so the run of show of what we're gonna do tonight is we're going to preview our short film. Uh, we'll have some space for processing, some reflection, um, a short Q&A about some of the art pieces that are in it. Um, we will teach a dance and we will teach a Yiddish lullaby and then we will say goodnight. Um, so again, we are so, so grateful that you've joined us two years into a pandemic when the Zoom fatigue is super real. Um, we're glad that all of you are here with us tonight and we have 36 people here, so double high. So it's all, it's all perfect and very exciting. Um, so without further ado, I think we're just gonna launch right into our short film about splitting open and finding new word, worlds and words maybe in what we split open. Um, and maybe we can also just introduce ourselves real quick before we jump into that, because it's been a while. Um, it has, so, yes, Kasha, yeah, you're um, right. We miss y'all. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for coming back to us. You know, like sometimes, oh, I'm Kasha, by the way, hello. I'm Kasha Renishkis. Um, um, and yeah, you know, like, when you're when you're away for a while like you're like did they forget about us like did they move on like i don't know what the gen z's are doing with their yiddish queer burlesque troops like you know things who who knows what happens but there's 36 of y'all oh now there's 37 it kind of ruined the double high but it's okay we like more people um so i'm just like feeling feeling so grateful that y'all are here with us it's beautiful um, and yes, please, please um, drop any love, feelings, um, process your emotions with us, let it out, just like cry. I want you to cry tonight, okay? Um, and if you don't have access to crying, that's okay too, but try. If you feel it, let it happen. Um, Becher, what's on, what's going on with you? Shalom Aleichem. Everyone, hello. I am Becherdik, aka tonight I am also Holt Schnitter, the woodcutter. And I'm going to turn it back over to not prolong your excitement for this film any longer. Mm, yeah, Becher doesn't want to tease y'all, but I kind of do. But I, I'll stop. Um, okay, okay. So I'm going to share my screen. And Optimize, and we're going to do this. Okay. All right, y'all. Um, we're gonna really, really, really hope that this is not laggy, because you know how Zoom is sometimes. But we did everything we could to make it as smooth as possible. Um, if you turn off your camera, that also may help. Um, so that's a possibility. All right, y'all. With no further ado, please enjoy.
Wir wollen Wunder, sind gespalten, viele Gram, hat sich geschuckt. Wir wollen Wunderlach, sich gespalten, Fieder Jan hat sich gespalten. Mir wollen Wunderlach sich spalten. Fieder Jan hat sich gespalten. Mir wollen Wunderlach sich spalten. Fieder Jan hat sich gespalten. Mir wollen Wunderlach sich spalten. Fieder Jan hat sich gespalten. Mir wollen Wunderlach sich spalten. Wieder Jam hat sich gespalten. Mir wollen Wunderlach sich spalten. Wieder Jam hat sich gespalten. Mir wollen Wunderlach sich spalten. Wieder Jam hat sich gespalten. All right. So, thank you everyone for watching. Thanks for the love in the chat. Um, I'm just gonna take us through a minute just like to feel into whatever that brought up for you. So just like take a breath and just notice like, what are you feeling right now? Where in your body are you feeling it? I know right now, for me, my heart is beating pretty fast. So where are you feeling that in your body? Maybe it's in your stomach. Maybe it's in your head, in your eyes. Check in with your feet. Check in with your legs. What's going on for you right now? You don't have to assess it or understand why it's going that way. Just be with it, acknowledge it. Tend to it, Just take care of that, whatever is happening. Maybe put a hand where on your body you're feeling that right now. And just 
breathe some air into that part of yourself. It's alive. It's present. Hmm. Just if you need to, maybe just move a little bit. You can roll your shoulders out, you can roll your neck side to side. If you want, you can stand up and kind of just shake your body a little bit. But just shake your hands, maybe. Just let yourself feel through and move through whatever energy is there for you right now. Cool. All right. Brenda, what do you have for us? Thank you, Kasha, for grounding us in our bodies. Um, so uh, something that we have done for the past three years, every time we have a show almost, is we like for it to be a starting point and not an ending point, but a starting point for conversations. And so we have a question for you to reflect on. Um, you can do it completely for yourself, just write it down or think about it. Um, if you want to think about it for a few minutes and then say it out loud, you're welcome to unmute yourself and share. If you wanna just put it in the chat, you're also welcome to do that. So there's many different forms of participating. But our question and what we're wondering about is after seeing this film, what feelings and thoughts come up for you when you consider the birthing of a new world? And what do you need then, what blessings do you need to ground yourself as the world splits open? And I'm gonna put these in the chat as well. So they're right there. And let's take maybe two minutes before anyone says anything to just think about that. And then um, at the end of the two minutes, I'm going to welcome everyone again to unmute and share or put in the chat or just listen and continue thinking about it. Okay, so what are some feelings? What are some blessings that you need? I have a question. That too. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was wondering what role Kasha Varnishka's played. Was, was that supposed to represent giving birth to a new world? Um, I, and I was wondering about the pomegranate. Did that represent the world splitting in half? It was very sensual. Hmm. 
That's my question. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is my mother, everyone. The woman who gave birth split open, one might say, to Kasha Vardashi. Yeah. Much, much gratitude. Um, um, yeah, I, I can start with that. And I would love to keep hearing people's any thoughts or reflections or even just feelings that came up for people in the chat as, as we talk. Um, but yeah, other questions and reflections are welcome too. Um, so I think you, it, yeah, I mean, for us, what we were thinking about was the, my role as the um, kind of embodiment of the world as it is. And um, Dicher, um, who was carving, was um, kind of body painting, the, the body painting that was on me was a reflection of the carving. Um, and the carving was sort of this spell that was being cast to split open the world um, and um, to birth the new world, right? And so I was the embodiment of the old world and I was being split open by this spell. Um, and then we were thinking of Brenda as sort of this, this kind of intermediary like being, this kind of ocean spirit that had the power to do the splitting, right? So Becher's spell was summoning this spirit who then could be the channel for that magic to split open the world. Um, and um, the pomegranate was sort of, yeah, like a, a symbol or one might say like the toy that Brenda used to channel all of that into the physical tangible splitting that we were longing for. Um, I'm seeing some beautiful things in the chat too. Maybe I can just like, we can read some of them. Um, so I see, um, Alicia says, what a sensual film, a very optimistic vision of what a new world can be. Yeah, speaking of sensuality, can we just take a moment to um, talk about Brenda's booty? Because sensual, come on, redefining sensual, yes. Can we get a, mm, can we get a close up? Just a little, a little spin, perhaps. Oh, oh yes, very nice, very nice, Brenda. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yes, thank you, Alicia, I appreciate that. Um, Brenda or Bifford, do you want to read some more of the chat? I like, um, there's so much in here that I like, but the, the thinking of change as water, which is healing and also unsettling, and I think about that with water in general, which is both healing and extremely dangerous in certain scenarios. And I think that as a like, yeah, as a vessel for change, um, it can be both at the same time and splitting open of the world can also be both. And so I like that identifying water as that agent. Um, and then also the carving of channels, you know, if we think about how carving of channels happens, um, often it is like over the course of a long time as water eats away at dirt or at the earth. Um, and so there are quick and slow and soft ways of all of this change. Um, and so I really appreciate Leah and Virginia and Carrie, what you're saying about the water and the channels and how that all works together. Yeah, also of uh this piece around um, that Carrie shared about water to cleanse and ease um, and this sort of softness, right? Like that one thing that we that we spoke about when we were kind of envisioning the stone. And, and I think after this, maybe Fifer, you could talk a little bit more about like 
the origins of all of this. Um, but yeah, like uh, we were talking about the pomegranate, right? And obviously there's splitting and there's, there's pain and there's violence and there's tension in that. Um, but also there's sweetness, right? And there is softness and that like the world that we long for, the world that we want to birth, we want a world that is full of sweetness and abundance and juiciness, just like the pomegranate, right? And also that it's gonna take a long time to get there. And so for us, the pomegranate was just such a potent symbol because it's a fruit that takes a lot of work to get to the sweetness, right? And yet at the same time, you don't need to get all of the sweetness all at once. As you do the work, you can take one seed at a time and taste that juice, savor it, let that replenish you and then keep working, right? And so for us, like that was just such a beautiful symbol for the world, the process of splitting open the world. Um, and so that's another reason why we really just like centered that. So thank you, Carrie, for noticing that. Do you want to talk a little bit about some of the stuff? Yeah, I'd love to. And um, also just wanted to lift up the, the blessing um, that Owen was giving or asking to receive in the chat for splitting open, um, being open, opening our hearts and not splitting apart and fragmenting away from our fellow beings. Um, and then also I'm appreciating the appreciation for the brushing at the ending. Um, that's one of my favorite parts, the brushing like, and the brush going over Brenda and becoming Brenda. Um, I feel like it's really calming too and stay tuned for my ASMR brushing wood videos. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, the foundation for um, the wood cut that's in this piece um, and the, this this video and this collaboration kind of came out of conversations that we all started having um, back in August. The the name we have been calling this piece um, and also that I've been calling the woodcut um, is Kimbit Breval. And that's because the foundation of this piece um, is sort of based off of the tradition of paper cut amulets um, for child beds um, and to hang above cradles um, that is that I know of as both um, a Sephardic and Ashkenazic tradition. Um, and in Yiddish, the word for this is kimpit brevel, which is like a, a little letter for the child bed. Um, and the other word for it is um, homolossal, which is for the, the song of a sense that is um, sometimes inscribed on these um, paper cuts. And I, um, I knew I really wanted to create something in this art form um, because I was like coming out of a couple of like really tough months of going back to teaching in person and feeling all of this worry and rage around the decisions that some adults are making that are like deeply making children unsafe um, in many different ways and just seeing the effects of like the ongoing pandemic on the kids that I was working with. And so um, when I, I was reading a paper cutting book um, and I like started reading about this tradition, it just resonated so much as like this um, protection for the little ones. Um, and then I started, I, I started thinking about it on like a larger, more collective scale um, when uh, I decided I was gonna make a, a Kimbit Breville um, very large print as part of um, a large scale woodcut event called Big Ink. Um, and like the actual woodcut is like two by three and a half feet. So I knew that in making the amulet so big, I also wanted to make it, um, make, expand it from out from like being a blessing for one individual child or baby and instead have it be a blessing for like all of the collective work that we need um, and for protection but also protection in the sense of like like revolution and changing the shit that we need to be able to feel safe 
Um, and so I just wanted to read a little description of the piece that came out of that. Um, and Golem, if you could share um, the picture on the screen at the same time, that would be lovely. Thank you. Um, shout out to our loyal Golem. Um, so the symbolism of this piece reflects both creating and care and the rupture and reckoning involved in calling other possible worlds into being. The natural elements evoke traditional healing remedies from Ashkenazic and biblical Jewish traditions, as well as representing different ways that plants adapt for survival, from thorns and shells to mutualism with pollinators. The central text in Yiddish is inspired by a Yiddish blessing for after giving birth. You have split open my body wondrously like you did the sea. And for this reimagined protective amulet, the Yiddish text reads, we will split open wondrously like the sea. Um, and the, the Yiddish text there um, that's reimagined in like the collective we is, it's from a tahina. Um, and tahina um, is a name for Yiddish, um, like women's prayers that were written in Yiddish that was, um, a realm uh, of prayers accessible to um, people who are not having access to education in, in Hebrew. Um, so Yiddish, the language for women and men who are like women, as it was talked about um, a lot there. But uh, I, I just really liked finding this blessing because it felt really powerful and rare to me to have a blessing of someone who had just given birth like being in awe at the power of their own body. Um, and, and also thanking God in this version for like God's role in doing that. Um, and, but also like seeing your, your own body as, as holy and powerful in that way. Um, yeah, and so then those, be, those also became the words that you hear layered throughout the film. Uh, yeah, I will. I think I think that's it. I think that's what I want to share. Um, oh, if you are interested in um, purchasing one of these prints, uh, don't believe in supply and demand economics, but there are some limited um, prints available for prints from this um, large print uh, event and show, and they are very big uh, prints. Um, so I'm selling those. Uh, if you're interested, I'll put my email in the chat too. Um, they're $500. I know that most people don't have $500 to drop on art. If you work for a Jewish nonprofit and who needs some art for their walls and you want to um, introduce them to me, please feel free to do so. Um, there's a lot of labor and love that went into this piece and I'm also hoping to create some smaller versions that will be much more financially accessible too. Thank you, Bicher. Um, that was beautiful. Um, I wanted to see um, if anyone from the audience, like after hearing that, has any like other questions that you wanted to ask about the process of creating the print or the process of creating the film um, or any of the themes or just thoughts you want to share. We would love to also like hear about anything that's coming up for you that like you have done in the world that feels related to this. So the floor is open. And the chat is also open. Okay, cool. Well, if anything does come up, drop in the chat, please. Um, yes, please chew on it. Um, and actually, so in the spirit of um, splitting open the world and kind of in a sense breaking open and 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 pushing through and kind of dismantling and destroying and burning all of the shit that we just need to get rid of in the world as it is um we wanted to bring in some very very beautiful um 
comrades here in DC who are doing that work right now, who are literally doing the work of birthing the world that we long for. Um, so we're gonna bring up um, our friend Leah from, um, who's working with the Survivor Support Fund. And they're gonna talk a little bit about that and how you can support the work of splitting open the world right now. All you, Leah. Thanks, yeah, hi everyone, um, I'm Leah. Can you hear me, okay? Yeah, yeah we can. Um, I use she, they pronouns. Um, I got involved with the Survivor Support Fund, which I'm gonna talk a little bit about this December. Um, and I wanna shout out Leah MP for bringing me into this project. Um, and I'm gonna share also a little bit about how folks can be a monthly donor if they're able. So um, the Survivor Support Fund has been a community effort to redistribute money to uh, six Black trans women and non-binary people here in DC who experience um, harm in the DC queer organizing community and now are seeking stable housing and transportation and healing. Um, and just so for a little bit of context, um, our collective DC community failed to keep um, seven Black trans women and non-binary people safe from abuse um, for years from a white collective member. Um, and these consistent patterns of abuse left some members traumatized and unsafe at home and forced others into homelessness. Um, and so this part, this um, fundraiser is a process of making amends um, to allow the survivors to have financial independence. Um, and a lot of the survivors have big dreams of starting their own businesses and launching their own collectives. And so it's really beautiful to see the collective community support around this, right? Just like Harmer's Collective, support is also collective. And so in the past three months, um, three survivors have moved into one bedroom apartments of their own. Um, two have found temporary housing and one survivor who is the black trans elder here in DC and who has contributed so much um, beautiful healing and liberation to DC is about to close on a home of her own, which is really exciting. Um, and three survivors have also bought cars. So um, I'll take a step back and talk a little bit about that. I personally got involved with this work um, and becoming a monthly donor for a few reasons. Um, I'm a transplant in DC. I uh, grew up in Massachusetts. And I know that by living here, I'm contributing to the ongoing gentrification in the city. Also, um, I identify with the word survivor. And I know that my ability to survive harm and abuse was in large part due to my financial resources. Um, so even though I just got involved recently, it's just been really beautiful to witness this collective care and deep community love. And it really affirms the notion for me that we keep us safe. Um, so uh, I just wanna invite everyone on the call to take a moment um, and think about what your connection could be to these survivors um, and this project in general. Um, and so the ask here is that we have a goal of raising um, about 1500 extra per month uh, for everybody as soon as possible. Um, and so if you're able, I encourage you to donate what you can either one time or monthly, but specifically we're looking for monthly donations just because that's the most reliable way to keep um, sending the survivors the income that they deserve. Um, and if you are able to donate monthly, we have this beautiful offering um, that is a print uh, called Infinitely Unfurling You uh, by our lovely Itai. Um, and I can see it there on the screen. Um, so you would receive this print if you're able to become a monthly donor. Um, and one note that I'm happy to talk to anybody about after this call is that when I was kind of trying to figure out how much to give monthly, I looked at the resource generation, um, which is a great resource. Um, and they write, give an amount that feels risky. Uh, if you feel too comfortable, you're probably not stretching enough, but if you feel destabilized, it might be too much. Um, so yeah, that's just uh, a short uh, offering of thinking about how much to give. But again, um, like, please drop your email in the chat. You can DM me like uh, just me if you want to talk more, if you want to get involved, if you have questions. 
um, and I will follow up with you. And yeah, I just know that there's enough money in our community for everybody to have the resources that they need. And I know that together we can support these survivors as they start these beautiful next chapters. So thanks for listening and I'll pass it on back to so Kasha, you're here. Yes, thank you so much, Leah. Um, this is beautiful, beautiful work, y'all. This is the work that we need to be. And like, I just wanna name that like, I'm, I'm so, so honored to be in community with people who are doing this work. Um, and you can keep an eye out in the chat. Um, our lovely Gollum will drop some links about how you can um, become a monthly donor. But um, yeah, I just wanna say that like, the work of splitting the world open requires community, right? Um, even the magical wood carving spellcaster Bicher could not split open the world without the help of Brenda, the ocean spirit, right? And all of the ocean creatures that, that um, nurtured uh, Brenda to emerge from the ocean. And so there's always interconnection and um, we, we can hold each other in this work. So um, yeah, please check out the links in the chat and give, even if it's just a small amount per month, it really makes a, a huge, huge difference. And like, this is the work that we need to be doing to actually like redistribute resources and power to birth the world we need. Mm, 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 it's so delicious. Um, okay, Brenda, I'm gonna pass it to you. Um, I know you have a really, really special thing to share with us now. Thanks, Kasha. Um, and yeah, so kind of going off of what Kasha said about all of the people and energy and time and space that it took us all to get here and how we can also redistribute that with the Survivor Support Fund. Um, I wanted to say a few words about my grandmother, Shula. Um, so at the end of the video, we dedicated this to her um, because she passed away about a month ago and she was 94 years old. She was born in 1927 in Vienna, Austria. And over the course of many years and many different versions of you know, her journey and her dreams and the world that she thought she was going to be living in, she ended up in Queens, New York, in this house that I'm in now here, um, where she lived for about 50 years. And she was an incredible, incredible person um, who, was always offering what she could offer. There were many people who stayed in this house for months on end, um, strangers who became friends. She would always offer people rides back home whenever she went to her big folk dancing parties, which she would go to multiple times a week. Um, she would be out until two in the morning until she was about 91 years old um, because she loved a good party and she loved to dance. And she was very good at asking for help in a very unassuming and straightforward way. Often when she would be dancing, especially in her later times of dancing, she would go to someone that she trusted and knew and she would just slip her hand into their hand and just say, can you help me? Can you support me? Can you take some of this weight from me? And so um, that's something that I am bringing with me from her as long as well as like everything else that she has ever taught me because she was the best. Um, and in her honor, in addition to dedicating the video to her, I wanted to teach you a dance so that we could carry on her legacy of loving folk dancing. So the dance that I'm gonna teach you is called the Hambo and it's actually from Sweden. Um, and so she would often go to Scandi dancing, which is Scandinavian dancing and there's international dancing and there's, everyone just does everyone's dances and it's this beautiful way of sharing history and culture. So um, from our Yiddish burlesque troupe, we're gonna teach you a Scandinavian dance. Um, so I'm going to stand up and show my feet. So also if that's something that is uh, good for you, then scroll up to the tips. Um, <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna teach the steps and then we're all going to um, do them together to music and it's gonna be a little bit rough, but that's, you know, that's life. It's all a little bit rough. Um, okay, so here are my feet. I pumiced them recently just for this. <laughs> um, okay, so the first step, there's only three steps that you're going to learn. And so the first one, this is a partner dance. So if you're 
in your house with partners, you can do that. And if you're not in your house with people who can be your dance partners, then I'm gonna teach it to how you can do it on your own. So the first step is just a step and a cross kick. So again, it's step, cross kick, and then you step again, cross kick the other direction. So if you're doing this with a partner, you're gonna be going in opposite directions. You just kick out first and then step and kick in. So it is step, kick, step, kick. All right, any questions? <laughs> As I like turn into a other kind of golem. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, after you do the step kick, so you go step, kick, step, kick. Then I'm gonna back up because there's not a lot of space, but in the same direction, you're just gonna do three short, quick steps. So it's just gonna be one, two, three. Okay, so if you put all that together, it's step, kick, step, kick, one, two, three. Okay, does everyone have that? Does anyone have any questions? Okay, great. <laughs> so after that comes the extreme fun part. This is very fun. It's fun together, it's fun alone, it's fun in the dark, it's fun in the light, it's fun any way you can do it. But you're going to turn each other around or turn yourself around by doing a series of steps that go like this. Oh yeah, back to the feet. <laughs> okay, so we were in this direction. So you're gonna step together, step together, step together. And now you should be back facing the direction you were going in. So again, you ended with the three little steps and then you go step together, step together, step together. And that you're gonna do pretty fast. And so if you're dancing with other people, you're gonna hold each other like this basically. And you're gonna spin around each other with those steps of taking big and small steps. Uh, and it's best if you can to try and alternate who's doing the big and small steps. So it looks like you're kind of spinning each other around. So we're gonna put it all together and then I'm just gonna play music and we're just gonna try and it's gonna be messy and that's gonna be great. So all together, <laughs> back to the feet. Oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> so it goes step out, step in, step, step, step. Step in, step in, step in. Step in, step out, step, step, step. Big circle, big circle, big circle. And that is the whole dance. So are you ready? Are you ready to try? We have what do we do with our arms if we're not holding someone? If you're not holding someone, you can just kind of whoop, float them up, I think. And then when you're doing the big steps, you can just kind of turn yourself in a circle. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna play some music and this is gonna be great. Do you see my screen? No, sorry. Hold on, you would think by now we would know how to do it. Mm. Hold on. Much better. Okay. <laughs> Everyone ready? Put in the chat if you're ready. Only more thing intimate than feet is screen share reveals. It's true. Okay. Mutaha's ready. Sydney's ready. Gollum's ready. Oh yeah, I see some feet. Thank you everyone for showing me your feet back. Last four digits for Venmo. Thank you. Um, all right, so it's gonna, it's gonna be great. Okay, and here we go. This is the Hombo.
everyone for doing that. I, I, I was so distracted by your feet. <laughs> I know I should have turned my camera off so that everyone could have really focused. <laughs> um, but I know that Shula must have been really laughing at all of us <laughs> um, trying to do that. And so that makes me laugh and smile as well. So thank you, everyone. <sighs> Thank you, Brenda, um, and thank you, Shua, for bringing the hambo and so much more into our lives. So, 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 so grateful for you and for her presence and for all of the beautiful love that she poured into making Brenda Rose's who they are. Um, so, y'all, we are sadly coming to the end of our show. Um, and I know that that's hard for y'all. So I want to end very gently. What we're going to do is um, I had the pleasure of taking a beautiful, beautiful class with the YIVO Institute. Um, it is a, a, an organization that teaches lots of Yiddish language and history and culture. And um, they taught a class about Yiddish lullabies. And it was this amazing class. It was myself and like 20 bubbies, literally like 65 plus Yiddish women learning lullabies to teach, to, to sing to their grandchildren. And because they wanted to reconnect with all of the beautiful culture that um, so sadly has, has been lost to many of us. And so this class was just this beautiful, beautiful experience of learning lullabies with all of these bubbies. And so, I have one that I wanted to teach to y'all um, as a lullaby for the new world that we are birthing together. And as we place that new world into the cradle and it is sweet and gentle and tender, um, this is a lullaby that we can sing. And also to ourselves, right? As you know, we are the, the babies in this new world that we're birthing, right? And we need lullabies and tenderness too. So. Um, I'm gonna actually um, just play it for y'all real quick, and then um, I'm gonna teach you just the first verse. Um, so this is what it sounds like. <laughs> Sitzt der Häuf auf Fegerle, macht es zu die Egerle. Häuf die grüne Zweigerle, wächst der Gorn Äpperle, macht zu mein Kind die Egerle, abbroche euch dein Käperle. Die grüne Zweigerlech, schroffen scheunen die Feigerlech, die Mame singt sie, ha, 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 es ist a stille Nacht. So that's the lullaby. Um, it's called Steht in Feld of um, This is the name. And I dropped the YouTube link a second ago. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. And um, I'm going to show y'all the lyrics. Just And we're just going to run the first verse together. And to us as the Schmatzas, this is really special. Um, this, this lullaby is very old. Um, I actually wish, hold on, I'm going to pull up my notes because I want to, I want to actually tell you a little bit about its history. Um, but basically, um, this 
is really special to us because we are like really, really, really committed to not only like carrying on and creating new art um, and culture as like descendants of, of Ashkenazi Jewish Yiddish tradition, but also to like bring in our ancestors and our inheritance that we so, so deserve um, that has been erased and stolen and sometimes voluntarily given up um, by the systems of white supremacy and the people who fell prey to it, right? Um, and also chose to participate in it. And so we wanna acknowledge um, both all of the complexity of that, all of the choices that our ancestors had to make um, around their culture and their language and their traditions. And also we believe that this is our inheritance. And so it's really special for us to be able to teach this um, to you and to sing it together. Um, and so this lullaby um, is um, written by Yitzhak Lee Peretz, um, who was a really big um, Yiddish writer. He wrote tons of prose and poetry and drama. Um, he wrote a play called Monish, which was very, very well known. Um, and he also wrote lullabies for children. Um, so I'm just gonna read this line by line, just the first verse, and I, you can just repeat after me. So the first line, and you can see the translation right here in English. Um, it's state in feld a So repeat repeat that after me. State in feld a bemole. And the next line is hot is green as fegelech. Try that. Hot is green as fegelech. And the third line is Zitz de Ruif a Feigolech. Feigolech, sorry. Zitz de Ruif a Feigolech. And then the last line is Mach est zu de Egolech. Let's try that. Mach est zu de Egolech. So all together. State in Feld a Bemele, Hot is green as Fegelech, Zitz the roof of Feigelech, Mach es su de Egelech. And that means in the meadow there stands a little tree, it has green branches, on one there sits a little bird, it closes its little eyes. And you might see this word, this little here, Fegelech, uh, Feigelech, which um, is. Uh, also a word used in Yiddish to refer to the beautiful, abundant, luscious queer folks as ourselves. So it's a very special word. Um, so the tune, as you heard, is Mach es That's how it goes. So if you want, on three, we can all try singing it together. And even if you want to come off mute and sing, I would love to hear your voices. It doesn't matter if we're aligned or in harmony or whatever. Um, I would love to hear everybody just sing their hearts out to the new world that we're birthing and to yourself and to all of your ancestors and all of the future generations. So I'm gonna count us off and we can sing together. One, two, three. Oh, <laughs> that was so sweet. <laughs> Thank you for singing that lullaby with us, y'all. Um, and I will also um, share with everyone the link um, to these lyrics um, so that you can also um, 
sing this again and maybe even learn the rest of it. Um, so that I will drop in the chat. So. Um, so let me sound my shoulder because you all can see my Google Drive. Okay. Um, so here's those lyrics. And I am just so, so grateful to have gotten to sing and soothe the new world together with y'all tonight. Um, Maka, is there anything else we want to say before we go? Happy anniversary, babes. Mm, yes. <laughs> Thank you all so, so much for coming. Ashanam Dunk. We're so grateful. It's not just our anniversary, but it's the anniversary of many of you who have been supporting and throwing so much love and feedback our way for the last three years. And if this is your first experience with us, then we welcome you and we hope to see you more and more for the next three years and Biz Hundred Sponsic until 120. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. 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 Um, please follow us on Instagram at Dirty Rags DC. Um, you can see that in the chat. You can also see where you can support us support the survivor support fund. Um, we will be posting the video like online somewhere. Um, so we'll also share that all out with all of y'all afterwards by email. So you can see it, watch it again, chew on it, check out Brenda's booty. Think about that splitting luscious juicy pomegranate. So all of that will be available to you too. Um, we love y'all so much. Um, and have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful rest of your year and we'll see you soon. One more, one more. I'm gonna play some music to play us out. Spazieren, ja, mein liebe Tochter. Mame, meg ich romanzieren. Ja, mein liebe Tochter, Hammer sucht er mir, Mame, meine Ehre, sind mir raffer Kochter, Mame, wo soll sein mein Enfer? Ja, mein liebe Tochter, Mame, meg ich gehen spazieren, Ja, mein liebe Tochter, Mame, Romanzieren, ja, mein liebe Tochter. Hammer sucht er mir, Mame, meine Ehre, sind mir Raffer, Tochter. Mame, wo soll sein mein Enfer? Ja, mein liebe Tochter. Mame, Lieber schöne Jingel, ja, mein liebe Tochter, immer wird mir gib mag dich ringel, ja, mein liebe Tochter, er ist schön in euch, sehr klinger ich will, lub mal deier in Schwinger, Mama, wo's wird sein mein Enfer, ja, mein liebe Tochter. Er sucht, dass er ist, war lieb, den mir. Und ich hab ihm lieb, Guru, das Schier. Und Mama, nur gib an 